Babadogo area in Nairobi County. It is a behave of activity here despite the limited space. Yeah. Felis Tashiro, who is a mushrooms farmer together with her team, are diligently extracting mushroom seeds from these bottles before planting them in these bags filled with the nearly decaying grass considering that mushrooms depend on decaying plants or trees for survival. Yeah. After the bags are seeded, they are arranged in this room for growth. They are sprayed with a little water for moisture which helps in the growth. Four weeks later, we return here. The appearance of the room is breathtaking. The mushrooms are thriving. Oh. This should be three, four days. Shiro informed us that she started this farming after losing her business due to the COVID-19 pandemic that affected millions of people across the world. This is oyster mushrooms. I've been farming for the past three years. Uh, and I never woke up one day I just started farming. It was after character development, Yamaisha, after Corona, that is when I started uh, farming. So one day, as I was just a, a boring morning, actually, I went to my mother and I found her listening to somebody doing mushrooms. Then I got interested. Since mushrooms do not require a large space, their farming is fairly easy. Although I didn't have much money, I decided to go for the training and uh, that is how I started. I actually started very small with uh, like a hundred bags uh, and after the first yield it was encouraging so I decided to do it. Uh, right now I'm not doing a hundred bags, I'm doing more, oh, over one thousand bags like uh, the room that we are here it, it is a capacity of 1500 to 2000 bags yeah and uh, a bag like this one it's supposed to give you like six panets that is 1.5 kgs per bag yeah so 1.5 kg times 2000 maybe this is how we pack it as beautiful as it is this is what we call a panet quarter kg mm -hmm. you know actually with the structure it's very funny you see i'm in town and um, in the middle of concrete. I call it a concrete jungle. This is a wall of uh, an apartment, and that other one is a wall. I, I used iron sheets, then uh, I just covered up again with iron sheet and the, the insulator. And uh, the, the, the house was so small, it was not even 10 by 10. Currently, I'm um, concentrating with oyster and button. Why oyster? Because most of the people knows mushroom from where they come from, even here in our country. Uh, especially people from Nyanza, Western, coastal areas, they know mushrooms. And this one, it's a more of the, the traditional one. For oyster, a kg is 600 on a lower side, and uh, button is uh, double maybe 1,200, 1,500, depending on the season. Years ago, mushrooms grew abundantly in natural forest. However, the destruction of forest, climate change and other environmental challenges have led to a decrease of mushrooms. It is due to this that the National Museums of Kenya initiated research to identify the types of mushrooms growing in Kenya and how to preserve them. The major threat that we have on mushrooms, it is the habitat loss. Uh, because uh, uh, mushrooms uh, grow in nature, and uh, one thing uh, about mushrooms is that uh, their, their work is to degrade. Okay? As we said, it is to, to decay the organic matter. But what happens is that uh, when we clear the forests, and yet we say that uh, they are specialized, there are those that, that break down leaves, that is their work, 
there are those ones that break down twigs there are those ones who will come now and break down the, the logs and the stumps you know the hard stuff there are those ones who after every other every other organism has uh, done its work it just comes and just grows in the humus and just enjoys the nutrients that have been you know have been deposited through the work of other fungi there are types of mushrooms that are suitable for human consumption. Coming to identification of mushroom, it's, it's very technical, and that is where you see uh, we have equipment such as the microscope to get into the microscope so that you can know if an edible species uh, is uh, cultivatable or not. Because a lot of people ask you how, one of the most common questions is, how do we know a mushroom is edible? It's, it's not an overview answer. If, you've not, if you don't have indigenous knowledge about that mushroom being edible, do not try to eat it. This is the Ganoderma lucida. I mentioned before that it is actually used as a coffee. There's a coffee called uh, Ganoderma coffee. It is prepared as Ganoderma coffee because of its potency and its uses as cancer. It has cancer killing properties. Shiro shows us how to prepare mushrooms. With loads of health benefits to human health. I mentioned the, the Tamitomyces uh, species, the one that is uh, highly edible. It is found everywhere. Even right now, I'm sure if we do a nature walk, you may even be able to be able to collect it. Uh, just beside the river. This, apart from just uh, eating it as part of your nutritional addition to your body, it also helps with a lot of stomach issues. And we know in health, everything in human nature starts from the gut. Western and coastal areas of Kenya are known to grow abundant mushrooms, which heavily rely on natural forest. So far, we have collections ranging from as far as Arabuko Sokoke. We've covered uh, the whole of the North Coast, and the South Coast areas. We have ventured into Mount Kenya region. We have ventured into Laikipia. That is the latest uh, project that we are pursuing as we speak right now. Forest conservation is key in the survival of mushrooms and other fungi. It's threatened by that climate change itself. Because of those high temperatures, then you realize that uh, they are not able to withstand. They are not with, able to withstand that. And that is why the, the international bodies have come up to advocate for the conservation of fungi. Mushrooms provide a great employment opportunity considering that their farming is easy with the minimum need for capital. It has been a sweet journey for three years now. Uh, I can say, yeah, the reason why I'm saying it's sweet is because I've also created job opportunities. I can say that I'm a proud businesswoman. Uh, a farmer, an urban farmer, you know most of people don't like farming, it's involving, tiring, but I enjoy every bit what I do. I've employed like six people. And as the world temperatures continue to rise due to climate change, conservationists and researchers are calling for conservation of natural forests and their ecosystems for the sake of Mother Nature. Dan Kaburu, K24. In Arabic County.